Hello John, today we're going to talk about the Catholic Church on what's called the silent persecution. So we'll start off with talk about Obama, USA, healthcare, abortion and the same sex marriage. So if you want to go ahead and talk to us. Uh, thank you. Um, yes, uh, there was a phrase used by an Archbishop in the USA uh, as a result of the, um, the health provisions uh, of the Obama administration in the USA. He referred to it as the silent persecution because of the laws as regarding uh, abortion and same-sex marriage. And these uh, matters that have occurred in the USA, uh, by the way, by the dictates of the Supreme Court in that country, uh, various states had laws uh, to start to make it difficult uh, and to uh, support Christian principles in their affairs and they were obliged because of um, the Supreme Court in the USA uh, to um, it over, uh, overrode their um, uh, laws uh, so making it mandatory uh, for abortion uh, to be uh, uh, spoke uh, to be taught in, in, in schools and uh, likewise same-sex marriage. Uh, the reason then about uh, the objection of uh, the Archbishop in that country was uh, because it made it nearly Im it's impossible for Catholics and Christians working in that particular section uh, in, 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 in the health provision or in hospitals or schools uh, to promote uh, these items uh, and if they don't they're liable to be prosecuted and perhaps jailed so this is why he calls it the silent persecution they are not going persecuting them as they are in uh, certain Muslim countries where you have this attack on Christians well, uh, well um, spoken about and written about in the media in Syria and Iraq, Pakistan and various other uh, countries that have a Muslim majority, including Saudi Arabia. So uh, this is the background uh, that the Archbishop spoke about. Which Archbishop are you talking about, John? Well, uh, this, this man uh, might be Archbishop Corilon. Okay. Uh, but there was another, m m most Archbishops are speaking about it, uh, but it's not being reported in the media. Uh, the only place that you might see this reported are in Catholic and Christian magazines and newspapers. Okay, uh, Archbishop Cordelon, he, um, he gave a speech recently, I think, did he, on the Latin Mass? He did. He spoke in Manhattan. Uh, in front of a, an audience uh, that were there uh, to hear the Christian, uh, the Catholic and Christian faith explained as it, it should be practiced in Catholic churches throughout the USA and indeed uh, in English speaking countries throughout the world. He, his speech said quite clearly that Vatican II did not um, did not give permission or allow the universal uh, um, practice of the Catholic Mass to be other than in Latin. Sir John, well, what's Vatican II? Vatican II was uh, um, a meeting of cardinals, archbishops, and bishops throughout the world uh, in conjunction with. His Holiness, I uh, think Pope uh, Pope Paul VI, uh, at which they uh, brought in rules to modernise uh, the practice of the Catholic faith and to give um, to, to, to give um, a, a, a role ahead uh, for to involve the laity more than they may have been uh, before Vatican II. Oh, okay. So. Uh, so they issued certain guidelines, uh, but a lot of the Western churches, as particularly the English-speaking uh, area, and also certain other areas, interpreted uh, as being 
uh, to have the mass in the language of or the vernacular in the language of the particular country, in other words, in the English countries, to have it in English, and um, and then in other countries to have it in the language of their country, Spanish, if it's Spanish, French, if it's French, and so on and so forth. Now, uh, this was never part of the um, result of Vatican II. Uh, it, it mandated for the Mass to be celebrated in Latin as it had been throughout the centuries, which was described as the universal language of the Catholic Church. So it also then meant that the altar was moved, instead of the priest facing the tabernacle where our Lord is supposed to be uh, situated, body and soul, soul and divinity, um, it, 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 so um, this was a change for so as the, the priest celebrating Holy Mass would be facing the congregation. Uh, some people might often refer to it as facing the audience. Now, this is against the practice of the is, Catholic faith down the centuries. Is this the Latin Mass now you're talking about? That, that well, they face correct, the altar? This is the Latin Mass, uh, which was um, the Mass as had been practiced for centuries. And Latin then was the universal language of the Catholic Church, so that no matter what part of the world you were in, you were able to follow the Mass by having a, a miss, 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 a missile, a missile. Uh, most most practicing Catholics had missiles, and they were able to follow the Mass uh, in the language of the particular country that they were in. Uh, if it was English, it, it, the part would be in English, but the, the main part would be in Latin. Okay, I mean, we're going to talk about Mass later on a little bit more, you right. know. In a, a different video, we just want to move on and ask you about Cardinal Canizares. Um Can you tell us about Car the Cardinal? Yes. Was he prosecuted, or he was going well, to be prosecuted? Canizares uh, is the uh, Cardinal uh, in Valencia, in Catalonia, in Spain. That's an area in Spain that has a, a provincial, a provi provincial government. Uh, Cardinal Canaries um, spoke about the Catholic faith as is his duty to do so. And he spoke about the um, traditional marriage and children born, male and female. He complained about the, um, the concept of marriage now as being between people of the same sex which was brought in in Spain. Uh, he, he also complained about the abortion that was brought in in Spain by socialist governments. Uh, and, uh, so, and he also complained about unfettered immigration, and uh, particularly of Muslims into Spain, uh, because uh, some years ago there was a loss of life in trains in, in Spain, uh, which was um, um, done by Muslim extremists in that country and uh, it caused a, a tremendous loss of life and also uh, uh, injuries to, to persons uh, travelling into work in that, in that country. So he complained about that, the unfettered immigration, he's not against it but unfettered uh, and also he complained about uh, feminism, in other words the um, the sort of lauding of one particular sex over another and all the rest of it and what that ensues. Now there's a socialist government in charge in that region by and the president was a fellow called Zemo Pug, P U O G, and the vice president of one called Monica Uther. They were vehement in their opposition and complained about the Cardinal speaking, as he was entitled to do, about Catholic uh, moral teaching. Uh, so they wished him to be prosecuted. The, L, the lesbian... Uh, LBGT is it? The LBGT, the, that's the lesbian, uh, bise uh, homosexual, bisexual and transgender organisation also uh, 
wanted and prosecuted. And you, you mentioned that these, these are socialists, is that correct? Correct, socialists and anti-Catholic bigots. Can we go back to the 1930s? Um, something terrible happened in the 1930s. Well, you see, uh, just to finish about Archbishop, before I go on to that, okay. uh, Archb- uh, the, uh, the, 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 the Cardinal, rather, uh, Cardinal Consider, consider uh, they wished to prosecute him and resulted in uh, perhaps his uh, jail, jailing for three years. I'm glad to say that subsequently the prosecutor in that country, as a result of petitions worldwide, uh, uh, against uh, what uh, the socialist government were proposing and the LGBT brigade, uh, the prosecutor decided he had no case to answer. So he's not being prosecuted. That's the good news. Now, uh, the question you asked about the, the socialist the, government the in the 1930s. Government in the 1930s, it was it was uh, it was called a Republican Party, but it was a socialist government. And this, along, are, I just want to say, John, is this in Spain? In Spain, Spain, that's right. Spain that's right. along the lines of the Communist Party in Russia, which was violently anti-Catholic and anti-Christian. The socialist government that was in Spain in the 1930s, it was elected by the people, uh, but they were violently anti-Catholic and, try, and suppressing the teaching of the Catholic faith and the Christian faith throughout the country and bringing in laws uh, to make it difficult for Catholics to practice their religion as they did in Portugal as well, by the way, earlier. Now, um, General Franco led a nationalist uprising against this attack on the Catholic faith. He's often portrayed by the Western media, particularly in Britain, as a fascist, but he was actually a national, he was the leader of a national uprising against the against the, the, the practices of this socialist government. It resulted in a lot of deaths in that country, including, and this is never much publicised or spoken about in Western media circles, uh, the, the, the murder of six, over 6,000 Catholic priests, nuns and monks in monasteries. Now, they weren't bearing arms, they were doing what they do, which is preaching the, the, the Catholic faith and the word of our Lord Jesus, and, and uh, which were entitled to do. They weren't uh, burden arms, but they were murdered by this socialist Republican government. I just want to move on to, to um, another group that might be also anti-Catholic, Amnesty International. Do you consider them to be anti-Catholic? Well, by their support for abortion, uh, which is the murder of the innocents, and uh, and not alone in this jurisdiction where there is the uh, protection for the mother and and the, the, the child that's about to be born, um, they they are attacking and they want that uh, safety for uh, the mother and child to be changed so as they can abort children if they so wish, even up to conception, and they're also interfering in the north of Ireland. Uh, and demanding that they have a abortion there also when the people there in, in, that's in charge of that local assembly have, have banned it. Uh, so, you know, they're interfering in another jurisdiction, Amnesty International. So, uh, this is an organisation that was founded by a Catholic. Well, uh, was he a practising Catholic? He was a practising Catholic. Uh, uh, I haven't got his name to hand, but it's very easily looked up in, in the internet or found out. And he practised various, he, he practised uh, the protection of innocent people that were in jail for their Catholic faith and for their Christian faith. John, thank you for giving us an insight into the silent persecution, as you see it and maybe as others see it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.